Welcome back, everybody. Party Moses here, and although I said we we're going to wait for Joe Hooker to arrive, I have been interrupted by the Army of West Tennessee, and I'm really hoping it's not going to be like it was last time, and they're just going to bounce off of us. So, let's see what happens. Again, I have to be struck... I'm struck by the bizarre... I don't know... Uh, problem-solving of this AI. Uh, or, or, I guess, the, the whatever algorithm they have that runs the... the, 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 the disposition of your armies, right? Because... I have not moved Grant's army, and I have not moved Kearney's core at all. They have sat in the same spot now for weeks. Well, days. And John Bell Hood keeps attacking us. He keeps coming at us. It is John Bell Hood, right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting that wrong. Where's the commander report? Army of West Tennessee. Yeah, John Bell Hood. Um, anyway... John Bell Hood keeps attacking us, and we keep having, you know, different, sometimes it's a meeting engagement, sometimes it's a defensive deployment, sometimes I'm attacking, that kind of thing. But also, like, I haven't moved the armies, and Kearney's 14th Corps is three hours away. And it's just, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes I really wonder what's going on, because I genuinely don't know most of the time. Anyway, I know I know all you folks really love uh, confident YouTubers who are really confident about what they know about the games they're presenting themselves as experts upon. So let's get started. Let's start this retreat real quick. So when you're trying to position your troops, trying to give them orders to, <coughs> oh excuse me, to deploy on roads like this. Uh, you have to remember that your orders to your divisions will be coming from your Corps commander. And so if I were to order Hancock and Morgan, or right now Morgan and Crook both at once, Crook would actually start moving before Morgan, which means that Crook's men would jam themselves up against Morgan's men, unless you stagger them really specifically, which is what I'm trying to do. It is something that is not the most fun or satisfying mechanic, in my opinion. But what do we say about stuff like that? It is what it is. What you gonna do? Hey, whoa, check that out. Halt. That is a much closer line than I expected. Wait, don't give that order. Okay, they are stopped, so withdraw. Okay, so I did not expect them at all to... That's a clever, clever deployment. They didn't even go for the, the victory point. They just deployed right along my line of march. That was super clever. That's a really shrewd move by the AI. All right, well, I'm going to make my main line here along this little hunting track, this little wagon track, whatever it is. And I'm going to get, uh, hopefully, all my divisions moving elegantly so they don't jam up we'll see that is uh I'm actually going to order the second division under William scott hancock winfield scott hancock to double time hancock seems like the kind of guy who would like his men to double time more often than not well i expected them to i expected the rebels to immediately withdraw the fact that they haven't is pretty cool All right, Hancock advance a bit. 
That's a bit. This terrain is not the best for artillery, just because there's lots of trees, lots of uh, broken ground. Their artillery, on the other hand, seems to be able to fire. Who's getting fired upon? Unless that was mine. Yeah, so they somehow have line of sight against me through the exact same obstructions that I have, but I do not have line of sight on them, which is pretty frustrating. A complaint about this game you'll see pretty frequently is uh, basically that. The artillery sighting seems to be pretty poor. Um, the game doesn't seem to be terribly consistent. <coughs> Boy, excuse me. The game doesn't seem to be terribly consistent about the line of sight of artillery and how, how they can be sort of effectively deployed. Um, which can be really frustrating when you have superior artillery, when you've got nice 10-pound parrot guns and they can't shoot because there is a sapling in the way. Um, and then sometimes, like, even though the firing arc that I have for, for my parrot is so bizarre, they're firing just fine over here. So it just... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of confusion and frustration for people. And just, just to... I'm, I'm mostly just bringing this up because... You know, even veteran players, I guess, if I flatter myself to call myself a veteran player, uh, even veteran players get frustrated by it, right? Because it is it is something that is inconsistent, and the game, in many ways, doesn't help, right? It doesn't try to make it easier to understand what's going on. It just sort of lets, lets your stuff go. Okay, so, like always, start detaching our... Artillery battalions because I want to be able to move my infantry uh, on their own. I'm not sure why they're so being so weird right now. No, not artillery, scamming. There we go. Okay, so we can see the enemy are sort of shifting around. It's always a good sign. They're reacting to the threat we're presenting by bringing our divisions up this way, which is what we want. Uh, what we don't want, however, is to be absolutely flattened by rebel artillery, which is which is what's happening here too. So they are in entrenchments, but we don't have line of sight, which is the frustrating thing. So I'm going to start my advancement. Sumner is going to move in this way. Not sure why he doesn't have the advance orders. He ought to. I'm going to let them go first, and then I'm going to bring Morgan and Hancock, since their infantry component of their divisions are so small. So, uh, just like we illustrated, right? I'm going to pause. Crook is moving faster because Crook got his orders from Grant, who's right here. Uh, Sumner has to get his orders all the way from Kearney who's way back here. And because I haven't moved Wool up yet, Wool is going to... I'm basically leaving Wool as reserve. I should have moved him up before. Alas, I did not. Uh, but yeah, Kearney is so far away that Sumner is not going to give his orders until after Crook basically arrives. Which is fine for now, but especially if, if eventually you want to have like coordinated assaults on enemy lines like this, you ought to pay, pay some attention to that. Let's get some skirmishers out to harass the enemy artillery. And now we make sure that our infantry are in range to fire. William H. L. Wallace I want up here quickly because he's got those halls 
And even though we have discussed that the halls are sort of absurd in this game, I still want them firing because game mechanically they are quite good. Alright, this battery got beaten to crap. So I'm going to withdraw it. I don't think Forney's Brigade is really long for this world. Push them. Hey. Oh. Nope, that's just corpses. I thought they were forming a square, but it turns out that's just the dead bodies littering the ground, making it look like they were forming a square. a little macabre. just don't seem to be having much of an effect at all on these guns, but I think they are pulling away. They're, they're pulling their attention. Alright. Get in there, Wallace. that brigade away has given us a nice way to dress our lines here. I want to try to form up with as few sort of angles and weird bits as possible. I'm also going to turn Barnes on long range because I want him to fire at those guns. Wool is taking his time moving up and I think it's about time to bring Morgan and Hancock into the fight. I'm also... We're gonna we're gonna see it here, folks. I'm gonna I'm gonna outline my plan. I don't know if it'll work. This might be a, a, a good way to throw away some lives. I'm not sure. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take Hancock's men. I'm gonna put them into single line. I'm not sure if they're gonna change their formation or what. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to give them the formation of column attack column. And what I'm going to do is have them charge this line. Now, there will be... I'm not going to charge until they're supported. I'm not going to charge until I've got some flanking fire going in on the trenches. But I will be using the column advance and the charge mechanic to see what happens. Because I have not used it all that often. Uh, I've used it very seldom, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I'm interested to see um, what's going on. So here's another thing to, to pay attention to, especially when you have brigades with weapons with a high rate of fire. Wallace has engaged way after the 1st Missouri. The 1st Missouri has been in the thick of this since they were one of the first brigades that I had that started firing. Uh, they're down to 49 shots. Wallace is already down to 49 shots. And so it's something that you really have to pay attention to when you're using these high rate of fire weapons because they will burn through ammunition very quickly. 
Alright, we got Hancock's men changing position. We've got Morgan's men coming up. How are you doing? You're doing okay. You're under artillery fire, so I'm going to have you lay down. You've got a perk. Let's give them deadly volley. I'll put them on short range and have them advance. Make sure you keep your division commander up close. Alright, there goes another brigade. I'm really glad. Very glad that the rebels have decided that they're actually going to stand and fight this time. Hey, check it out. Baylor's Brigade captured. 922 men. Great. So another thing I want to pay attention to here, I've got Burnham. I just gave Burnham the perk to use uh, short-range volleys. Um, they also get more resistance to taking high casualties in a short period of time. And it levels up by fighting in short range. And I'm not sure if that means short range as in you have your men literally firing in short range. Or if it means just literally firing up close like this. So I want to watch their, their, you know, their little perk slot go up to see if, even though we're not on any particular range, to see if they gain some experience when they're this close. It's looking like they are. Yeah, that's that's going up. Okay. So they don't actually have to explicitly be firing at short range. Um, but that is, uh, that is giving them experience. So I want them to keep it up. I want them to keep walking. I'm going to have them engage the guns. Okay. Hancock has been sitting here long enough. He is probably frothing right now uh, at the... All right, you have to give that by brigade, not by division. All right, let them form their columns. Third Michigan, I'm going to point that. Well, oh, they're not going to get a chance to play. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see. We'll advance them up anyway. But I am going to charge these guns. Enemy is withdrawing. And by now, you know what to do. You know exactly what to do. All of these guns are actually property of the United States Army, so all we're doing is really repoing them. We're coming back and, and, you know, sorry. Rebels haven't made their payments in time. You know, I don't even like that joke. I don't like repo men. WHL Wallace got some pretty good, uh, had, oh, Lord. WHL Wallace had a pretty good time in this battle. Ten casualties. I'm going to take a closer look at the HQ reports at the end of this one. I often don't. But I especially want to look at, uh, where is he? Burnham. And Wallace. This whole division, as a matter of fact. First Division, and then uh, Wallace is in Kearney's First Division. Alrighty. So, WHL Wallace uh, has gained a perk. Um, 
And yeah, you've seen it a lot, but I'm going to give them the Zwav perk, mostly because the Zwav perk allows them to run uh, and, and level up by fighting prone and a number of other pretty useful things. My cavalry can't even catch them. All the scouts in. I'm not going to charge 2,600 men, even with a full cavalry brigade. Alright, let's speed the time up. Alright, this was pretty good. Minor victory still. 23.5%. There's, there's really no way I'm going to be able to inflict more. Another 3%. So we'll just sort of let them go. But I have driven them away. I hope that this will <laughs> this will get uh what's his name? The enemy commander. John Bell Hood. I hope this will convince Hood to leave me alone for a while. Okay, let's inspect battlefield. I hope this doesn't fork up, because sometimes it does. And let's look at combat report. Want to go Union, Army of Tennessee. Um, First Division inflicted 1,500 casualties. Pretty good. Uh, I believe, uh, who was it? First Indiana, 697 casualties inflicted, 711. That was Burnham. He's the one that got that short range perk. That's incredible. First Minnesota, 632. Wow. I don't know why this does this sometimes. It's very frustrating. 21st Corps, I believe, is my cavalry. Yeah, this is... First Illinois. Wow! Alright, see, so I'm, I'm hitting First Illinois. Click. And it's showing me the First Iowa, which isn't what I want. Uh, this has been happening a lot. I, I'm not really sure why. And it, like, no matter where you click, it, it's only ever going to show that First Iowa unit. Um, anyway, First Illinois. 999 casualties. 90 inflicted on guns alone, and 200 on cavalry. And that's W.H.L. Wallace. That's him with his Hall Rifles. That's pretty good. All right. Anyway, you've probably had enough of that song. So let's get out of here. Victory at Grenada. Army of West Tennessee fleeing in panic. 1,444 soldiers have been paroled. There's no prison camps are available. And that's fine. I don't want prison camps. They're expensive and pointless, in my opinion. All right, so they're routing pretty good. Um, and I think I want to move a bit more aggressively. Man, that Army of Alabama. Okay, 2,100 men. I don't need to worry about it. I'm going to... I need to move them out of the way first. So what I want to do is get my... See, there's no way you can go into, like, the... Well, maybe you can. If I go into Manage Army, click Buford. Okay. You can do that. I'm going to move Buford down here a little bit. Move him on the rails. Um, and I actually want to have him scout. So this does mean that once I turn him into scout mode, he likely won't be much use in a battle. He'll take dozens more hours to get to the battlefield but it will mean that i'll have more information about what's what's all going on around here right so we see that there's a supply depot being built but i don't know who's building it and what their strength is i can't see it from my mississippi squadron um so i want to have buford start some scouting and i want to see what he comes up with uh and in the meantime 18th Corps. Why? Man. Now you would think there'd be plenty of provisions here. I guess not. 
So I suppose I'm going to build a supply depot over here, right on the, on the railroad tracks. <laughs> Imagine being the conductor there. There we go. All right. It costs almost 6 million. That's a lot of money, but apparently I need it. Um, I might also, I think I'm going to burn this one at Dyersburg down. Don't need it. Department of Missouri, you ought to head back. No, I'm going to keep you here. Yeah, I'm going to keep you right where you are. I assume this is something like the 15th New York. 140, 54th. They're all named. Second battery's not named. Where are we on 107 days? We got quite a while uh, before those Jolsons arrive. They do. There is enough for at least one of these guys to take some Muscatoon. Oh, and I also have 4,500 of these. So why don't I just give them some? Cool. Jolson carbines for the boys. Andrews is in pretty good shape. Doesn't have any cavalry, but that's okay. Alright, let's see where we are on U.S. Colored Troops. 34 days. And if there's any projects we really want. I'm thinking uh, armored gunboats is something I'm thinking about. But I might also just go straight to ironclad gunboats. Or, since I already have enough, maybe just straight to ironclad monitors. And ironclad monitors would certainly help us against forts. And that's what I'm mostly thinking my river, my river force will be useful for, and my navy operating in the Gulf. Is to get some of these monitors in there, and that might, uh, that might help with bombarding forts. How much money do I have in my subsidies? I have 8.8 .8 million. It's 3.5 million for monitors. It's even more for... It's 4.3 for ironclad gunboats. Huh. Rebuilt ironclads. I might take Sharps Rifles at some point, too, but I think right now what I want to focus on is the Navy, the River Navy, the Brown Water Navy, and, and that. So I, I'm going to take Monitors. I'm going to take Ironclad Monitors, and let's build ourselves one. I know that we have at least one th level 3 port in the region. Fleets. Create new fleet. All right, we need a level 3 port in the west. Chicago Harbor. Wish we could just sort by port level. Memphis Memphis Port. Memphis, Tennessee. That's okay. This would mean that I have to hold it though. But we're gonna do it. Mississippi Squadron 3. Alright, construct a new ship. And I want River Monitor. Look at that. 16 pieces of naval artillery. It costs... Oh, that's... Is that what I wanted? Ironclad Monitor. Here we go. There we go. 207,000. That's a lot cheaper than I expected. 16 pieces of naval... Or 9 pieces of naval artillery. Alright, let's build... Let's build two of these. That's a sweet name. <laughs> Canonicus. Um, Alright, let's call this the...
Well, I'm just going to build these for now. I'm going to leave it as Mississippi Squadron 3 because I think what I'm going to do is transfer them into my currently operating river squadrons, right? So I might give maybe one of these monitors to the Mississippi Squadron and another to the Ohio. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I might put both of them. I'll probably put both of them in the first squadron first just to see just to see what happens just to see what what uh what's going on there so let's check other things out here so we've got put the 20th core this is another cavalry core right now it's only two brigades but i'm gonna also put them on scout six thousand yeah i'm gonna take uh I'm going to take Thomas here and push these guys out. Western Army, 1,100 men. And like we were saying last time, right? Like, I really wish the Rebs would smarten up and consolidate a little bit. Because this is uh, not militarily effective, in my opinion. <laughs> Having these tiny little buzzing flies going around. Stone's Army, 5,000. And they're all just, man, imagine the money they're putting into this. Supply depots everywhere. All right, you scouting? I, ha I have no more information from you. Move a little closer and see. If they end up getting attacked or something, I can just withdraw them. But I'm also going to move Grant down to about where they are now. Have they stopped their retreat? Or they... No, they're still moving. Yeah, they're still moving. The only big worry I have is that Andrews will get pulled into... Uh, pulled into a fight he's not really ready for. But we got lots of other things to worry about first. Let's see. Army of the Cumberland. I think most of these guys are pretty new. Yeah. Well, yes. Now, if I can click the actual functional core, that would be cool. And I'm going to bring them down to reinforce because I want to get. I want them to get some experience on the battlefield. And now, real quick, so I checked right before I got into that battle, and it looks like our, our boy here in the Chicago Foundries, the economy has changed once again. So the pre-goods cost up, keeps going up, and I can't figure out exactly why. It, it's just, you know, fluctuations in the price. But I can't really sort out the rhyme or reason why, why that would be. All right, so we've got... So copper ore All right the price is sort of rising little by little it's ridiculously low for the rebels and i don't know why that would be they've only got the one copper mine and it's much higher for me and the same with iron ore the, the price just sort of wildly fluctuating um so that might be addressed hopefully because i've got several of these mines that are upgrading Obviously not this one, the one that costs like a trillion dollars for no reason. But uh, this one's upgrading 27 days. 54 days, okay. So yeah, we've got quite a while until we're going to see any improvement uh, in that regard. But yeah, so, so uh, you know, I called, I literally called this a triumph last time. And uh, we're back down to economy alarm. So, I don't know. Some of these, of course, like Cumberland Furnace, that ain't mine. Chicago Foundries are ones that are mine. Catherine Furnace is in Virginia, which is Rebel. I'm not super worried about that because it's it's a Rebel town. What do I care?
Okay, we found what is down here. It is the Missouri State Guard. About 10,000 men. Alright, I'm going to do it. I'm going to run for it. So I'm going to send Kearney down first. Ride the rails. Five hour order delay. Completely ridiculous. Uh, and now that they're moving, I'm going to give Grant orders to come down as well. And I'm going to turn these guys off of scout mode so that they will be able to join the join the battle. We also should have... Yep. Same with these guys. Turn them off scout mode. Okay, a couple battles back to back, I think. Although, we might just get withdrawals back to back. Yep, so they're withdrawing from Jackson. And I'm not even going to waste any time. We're moving to Vicksburg. And I, I do want to see what the Rebels do about this, because I I wouldn't be surprised if they just, like, come snap up Grenada and just keep buzzing around up here. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they sort of get pulled down to come and defend Vicksburg. Ideally, that's what I'd like. And that is what makes most military sense. Like, I, you don't want to leave, you know, a force operating in your rear, but without Vicksburg, I'm cutting off river resupply. Uh, and so, basically, anything... Any supply that's coming from this way will have to sort of get through here. And anything from coming this way has to get through Vicksburg. So they're stuck basically with whatever they've got over here. Okay, why did this start a siege? I don't want to do a siege. We're assaulting. Let's go. Battle of Pulaski. This is at least the second Battle of Pulaski we've ever fought. We are defensive. Which, sure. I, I guess so. Uh, and we do have the 19th Corps that will arrive in three hours. Pretty cool. Uh, Thomas has a rather small force, which I'm okay with, especially given that right now we're defensive. Hmm. I'm tempted. I'm very tempted to set up. No, I don't have the men. Man, I hate having to set up in boring defensive situation. All right. So... What I what I assume is that the rebels will come down the Murfreesboro Pike and try to cross the rivers here, which sets me up for a pretty decent defensive battle. Sure. Oh, I was entirely wrong. All right, let's take a look at the HQ report and see what the rebels actually have. They have three armies, two of them already on the field with a couple divisions. Yeah, they've got three divisions on the field and they've got one heading back. So we're not... Yeah, they've only got 10,000 men on the field right now. And it's right here. So, well, you know, you know me. You know George Thomas. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pound them into dust. <laughs> um, I We also, of course, like, we have a reason especially now, to cheese this as much as possible, right? Because the rebel armies are cheesing this as well. Like, what they, they just continue to deploy and, and then withdraw, like, right at the beginning of the battle. So if they're not going to actually even give us a chance to fight, then we need to make sure that we have the opportunity to fight. And so what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to cheese this just a bit, because the alternative is we get all set up and then they just back out immediately. And that is a real bummer. You can see some Kansas Jayhawkers out in the fight here. All right, here we go. All 
There's something very satisfying, very visceral about that sort of instant volley. Press play and you're just already going. Look at the Jayhawk is in the woods over here. And yeah, cavalry is... Cavalry is making a charge. The bodies have stopped them. I want to get both artillery pieces to fire. And see, this is where I wish we could have, like, an emergency mode with the artillery. Like, just fire as fast as you can. Okay. Well, they're going to lose their... They're going to kill a lot of my gunners, but they're going to lose their cavalry. This is so... F oh, no. They're not going to kill any of my gunners. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how the morale algorithm works. Uh, in, in that particular instance, but I will take it. Where is your... Oh. No, where is your division commander? I believe I already did a halt. Oh boy, where? <laughs> Why are you so far away? <laughs> I think when I deployed, he, he was like across the river, so he had to ride all the way around to uh, cross the bridge. So that's why these guys are taking so long to do anything. All right, enough of this. Curl the Jayhawkers in there. Tell these guys to knock it off so they stop blowing up my ears with horns. So this was clearly only a couple of divisions. So this was clearly only a couple of divisions and definitely not enough uh, to represent the entire rebel force. I assume that one of their other armies deployed over here and is probably marching toward the victory point as we speak. So I'm going to reattach my artillery, and I'm going to order the entire Kentucky Corps to cross the river. And right now, I don't, I don't care super much about how exactly they do it. Uh, but I would also like to point out we missed it. We we weren't able to actually see it happen. But uh, Wagaman was thoroughly whipped out, and we captured. It's an artillery battalion, so it isn't you know the greatest triumph in military history, but it's it's pretty good. All right. Skipping some time, let's uh, get back by our victory point and await, uh, possibly, the second rebel army. Alright, a couple of things right away. So, as I suspected, they're coming down basically the Murfreesboro Pike. They, they didn't cross the river there, they stayed on this side. Uh, and they are coming down this little little trail here. Um, so let's try to get my infantry to make a move on. Uh, I'm glad I ordered them to go when they did. And it looks like the jumble is, of course, as always, caused by artillery. Let's have them stop. Get my infantry unjumbled. Getty arrives. 19th Corps is on the field. Good. So they should, no matter what happens here, they ought to get their... Right that way. They ought to get their first battle debuff removed after, after this. I don't think they need to be fired upon for, for that.
for that debuff to go away. Alright, whatever. So again, my skirmishers are just going to very dumbly fire at all of their skirmishers over here. Oh my lord, I hate I hate this crap on the roads. I hate it. And yes, I I am com I completely understand that it is a realistic problem. But it uh it's so 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 frustrating. I really genuinely don't think there's any reason for Jenison here to be disrupted and exhausted already. Like, all you have to do is walk around some guns, man. It's not that hard. Well, I might be able to get some artillery in place, thanks to the AI's absolute murderous frenzy that they have with regard to any skirmisher units they, that they see at any point ever. So that's something, I suppose. If I had some cavalry, I might even try to get my cavalry involved to go snatch these guns. But I don't. So, exhausted. Ex there are, all of them are exhausted. Oh, no. Tur Turkin. Turchin? Isn't. And I don't know why it's showing Sweeney is in melee. Is that just because of his skirmishers? Yeah, it must be. And their division commander is 10 million miles away. Get up there. Your division commander is also a million miles away. They get him. Oh my lord. There is no way. There's no way they can retreat their guns that fast. Come on. So there's either something bugged with the sort of melee initiation thing here or there's something bugged with how fast the enemy could withdraw their artillery because that is oh man I've seen a lot of bugs in my time I mean I guess firing at them accomplishes the same thing so it's not that big a deal All right, it's still showing somebody in melee, and I'd really like that to not be there anymore, because that sound is just very annoying. Why is it showing everyone in melee? You're not in melee! Oh, man. Okay, so this is, a uh, this is very clearly a, your game is bugs, you need to, to check your, the, verify your files sort of a situation. Because this is the kind of weird stuff that happens all the time. And, like, I can't... The problem with your troops being in melee all the time... They're not taking any casualties because they're not actually in contact with anybody. But it is tanking their fatigue. They're getting exhausted. Um, because, you know, they're, they're apparently swinging their bayonets around at nothing.
Henley got wounded. Oh god, I want everybody to shut up. I don't mind the bugs so much, but oh, what I can't stand is just the constant, constant, like, melee sound effect. Uh, you may have noticed I'm somewhat sensitive to repetitive noise like that. Like those, uh, the bugle calls for when artillery doesn't have, like, a good target. Uh, that, that bugs me a lot. And, obviously, having sort of perpetual, perpetual melee sounds. And so, like, here's another thing that I sort of, I sort of understand but I also wish were different, right? So I've got basically the Army of the, Ten the Mississippi's headquarters companies running around my battle line, and I can't capture them. I can't, I can do nothing about them at all. And that is a real bummer. And I, I think, I believe, I think they should be able to be captured, in my opinion. I think they should because you know it's just a it's another thing that's sort of a consequence of thing and like you know rebel uh, officers on both sides were captured and uh, there were higher much higher casualties among officers than this game really models and part of that is because the game models the brigade level it's kind of the smallest unit of maneuver unless you want to count skirmisher you know battalions something like that but at that level like there there were there were far fewer brigadier generals and certainly far fewer like division level commanders who were wounded and captured in the course of the war of course um and if if the game modeled sort of a regimental level in any respect whatsoever um even if it was just that like you know let's say each brigade has between three to five colonels that are active even if even if you don't actually get to turn around and command the colonels or, or get them to really do anything in particular. They don't actually directly influence sort of the map. Um, that would be one thing. Are you going to fire, my dude? Or are you not because you're stuck in melee? Okay, they are firing. There they go. Alright, I'm going to turn these guys on fire at will. Uh, and it looks like, yeah, my uh, little flanking maneuver here is working. So let's get them along the road here. But yeah, this is uh, this is definitely a verify your game files sort of a situation right now because of the the, the melee bug. Uh, oh man. Well, I guess it's not, it's not even a bug. It's the fact that the enemy headquarters companies are running up and down through my lines, and that's what's triggering the melees. Um, and as far as I can see, there's not really much I can do about it. Because, again, these, those headquarters companies are, like, impervious to taking damage. Or to being captured. See, look at he's saying he's under artillery fire. He's exhausted and he's in melee. And my computer's running like absolute dog shit. And I, I ordered my division commander to come up here a while ago, and he apparently did not.
can see it's showing that they're in melee, so they're not actually firing. That's a thing that's 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 also affecting this, right? It like they will not use their guns because they think they're using their bayonets. And that's all of my infantry brigades right now. So hopefully hopefully my reinforcements get here sooner than later. Because otherwise, like, this is just kind of buggy garbage is going to lose me the battle. No, they're withdrawing. Not going to lose the battle, but it's still, like... Okay, they've lost their guns, huh? No, I, I would have to I would have to capture a couple of full infantry brigades to turn this into a major victory, unfortunately. Uh, however, I will say this is a lot better than I expected it to be. Man, I really wish like you should I believe you should be able to capture these headquarters companies. I think you should be able to. They're on the map. If you don't want them to be captured, take them off the map. Make make the order of battle accessible some other way. Uh, like, the fact that they just can float around like they're with impunity and can, like, walk through your lines and trigger this endless melee is a problem. Twenty-three hundred casualties inflicted. Captured seventy-five guns, or at least knocked out seventy-five guns. It's pretty good. I'll take that. Alrighty, victory at Pulaski. Not so bad. Nice baptism of fire for the Nineteenth Corps here. They did. They did fine. Uh, and let's burn this depot down and let's get the 20th core to zip on over to support uh, here. now I'm surprised there's no supply depot that the enemy have built somewhere nearby well maybe over this way uh, and I've lost track of the army of what West Tennessee that was up here but I am moving on to Vicksburg, and it would be lovely, as a way to end this episode, to capture Vicksburg. Uh, also, let's check on... Uh, Hooker is coming. Hooker's on his way. He's almost here. Let's get him at least a bowling green. Make sure he's still moving. Yeah, all just nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. These tiny armies. Well, it would be quite the coup to capture Vicksburg. Not the 21st Corps. I want Kearney. There we go, 14th Corps. Move up to Jackson, make sure that is captured. Let's take a look at our front lines here. Yeah, so this should tick over in a moment. Have Vicksburg, a level 2 port. It might be wise to send a force over here to sort of scoop up these plantations in this port as well. 
And there's the Army of West Tennessee, sitting there, starving. Let them starve, I say. And then we'll have to deal with Stone's army. I can do that with the 18th Corps here, but I want them to finish that supply depot, which it just looks like it's going to take about a billion years to do. Okay, he's arrived. Army of Alabama. 100. Captain Jackson. Um, where is Hooker? Still moving. All right, the Western Army's moved again, I think. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my 20th Corps, all cavalry, and we're going to have ourselves an all cavalry battle. Unless they withdraw, which is possible. Very it, probable, even. And it looks like the Western Army here is also... All cavalry. So they, they've deployed defensively. Um, we're going to... We're going to get into this. I'm going to initiate the battle. I'm going to go in and save. And then I'm going to restart the game. Uh, if, if I can. Here we go. Assault. There we go. Alrighty, as promised, we have verified our game files, and we have loaded in to fight this battle. One thing you may notice is that we are we're now at a point where we're having so many battles that the battles are taking up the bulk of the time in these recordings. And to be quite honest, at least when I'm watching other channels that play grand tactician i find the battles the least interesting <laughs> right like i i like i like seeing the campaign movements and the discussion of the economy and and things like that a little bit more than i like battles and so now that the scope of this campaign has expanded so much that we're now comprising three different armies each with different subsidiary core in a quite large part of the map we're having more and more battles. So I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm going to think about trying to do different things um, with regard to how, how we, how I record and sort of present the battles and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to cut them out entirely and I'm not going to start auto resolving them or anything like that. But uh, there, I would like to, I would like to figure out a way to, you know, do less of it. One thing that we could do is to, you know, have more of these little battles that don't actually do anything. <laughs> where the enemy immediately withdraws. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victory at Murphy's, bro. Whatever. Okay. All right. So the Western Army there should withdraw. There they go. And Hooker is just about to arrive here to Bowling Green. So in order to move Hooker, because of the lag with with respect to the distance from which they the distance there they are from the leadership of the core I'm intending to put them in right now I want him under uh under Thomas but because he was so far away it would take longer than a hundred hours to get hooker moving and so I switched him back to the command of the Army of the Potomac to send him this way and now that he's closer, I'm going to once again transfer him under the command of George Thomas and the Army of Kentucky. So let's get transfer, turn garrisons off, Army of the Cumberland, Army of the Potomac. Wait, I think he's in the Army of the Shenandoah technically. Nope, he's in the Army of the Potomac, I think. Nope, where is he? Um, I believe he is in the capital. There he is. Hooker. Get over here. There you go. Okay, so now he is in the command bubble of George Thomas. Um, which is great. Because now he's closer and I can bring him down. Uh, right now I'm going to bring him just right into Nashville. 
because it looks like the Army of East Tennessee, a pretty pretty good chunky little force, uh, is making their way up. I'd like them closer too. Okay, so we should have uh, maybe a pretty interesting battle going up here if the Army of Tennessee is really going to fight. Now that we have Hooker here, we can leave the Army of the Cumberland. I know it's a, it's a rather small force. The Army of the Cumberland can stay here in Nashville, and I can start some more offensive operations with Thomas and the rest of the Army. And again, Chattanooga is a big target that I'd like to go for. I might. I'm still thinking about detaching the 20th Corps onto sort of an independent raid uh, up up the Appalachian Valley here. Still thinking about it. Um, Stone's army is on the move, but I'm not sure what direction. South? Okay, so it does look like maybe my capture of Vicksburg is actually pulling the rebel troops down south. And oh look! I have an economy alarm because of the plantations. So I wonder... I wonder if we'll start seeing the proportion of slaves um, start dropping now that now that this is a Union territory, right? Because it it should, right? These these plantations, uh, we we have the Emancipation Proclamation, right? Like we have emancipated all of the slaves in rebel states, which means that these guys should just start walking off the plantation. And we should start seeing, I think, the proportion of slaves working at these at these places start dropping. And like, I don't care right now if they're profitable. I don't want them to be profitable. I want to I want to free the rebel workforce. I want to free free the enslaved uh, that are that are stuck there working. Okay. I wonder if those guys are still moving. It is nighttime. They are coming up. So, I really wonder if this will be a full-scale battle or not. I'm very curious about it. And in the meantime, let's check out this guy, this foundry. 2.7 million and 2.7 million. Uh, I wonder if it's going to be the same here. 2.7 million, 2.7 million. So, yeah, it's fluctuating again. Um... So hopefully those iron mines are going to make a difference. Okay. Um, check on our boats here. The Missouri Squadron. They are ready to go. I'm going to bring them down here. For more vision other things. The Mississippi Squadron 3, these are our, man, Canonicus is such a great name. <laughs> um, these are our monitors, our river monitors that we are hoping to get ready. They're 6% ready, so it's it'll be, it'll be quite a while before they're ready, which is, which is fine. Um, man, from such humble beginnings, huh? Just looking at this, looking at the, the the scope, right, of this whole theater now, right? We've got these forces concentrated up in Nashville. We're down here in, in Vicksburg now. We've got Cairo and St. Louis, and you know, to think we started this campaign with a single army up here in St. Louis of fewer than ten thousand men, and between, I just went and counted the Department of Missouri at about thirty-eight thousand men. We've got. Uh, the Army of Kentucky, 45,000. We've got the Cumberland. Uh, the, it's the single corps. The Army of the Cumberland, the Cumberland Corps, uh, at about 11,000. And we have the Army of Tennessee at 43,000. Altogether, that's over 130,000 men. And again, just sort of like, you know, from, from such humble beginnings, we've got such a... Um, it's such a huge, huge scope now. All right, so Stone's Army, Army of Alabama. These guys will not fight, but I'm going to have Kearney walk up on them anyway. Um, and I'm really interested to see what's going to happen here.
because the, the Army of East Tennessee looks like it's going. It looks like it's really wanted to come to Nashville. And I say, let them. Or are they just going to park? Not sure what they're doing. Stone's Army and Army of Alabama. Yep. Down there by Vicksburg withdrawing. Man, I sure wish these supply depots took... There's... This is a little frustrating to me because... Let's turn on the supplies here. I don't think there's really any reason that these guys should be short on provisions. They've got the whole Mississippi and, and everything around it. I, I really don't think... I really don't see a reason why they should be in such straits. But they are, and so I guess the supply depot is how I'm trying to resolve that. All right, well, if the Army of East Tennessee doesn't want to come at me, I am going to come at them. Bring Thomas and his Army of Kentucky at them. And I'm going to get Hooker in on the action as well. So let's see. There we go. Okay, so a whole lot of guys. Probably around 60,000 guys uh, against about half that. So let's see if anything results. All right, now before the battle starts. God, excuse me. Before the battle starts. We have to we have to think about whether or not the enemy are just going to withdraw. And my bet is that they're just going to withdraw. Um, it's going to take a while for us to get anywhere, so I'm going to press play. And if the army decide if the enemy decide to give battle, I'll see you when we start doing battle. If not, which is more likely in my opinion, uh, I'll just see you back on the campaign screen. So let's see. All right, we have located the enemy line for now. So I'm going to continue moving my infantry and want to get them on the pike. Hmm, they're deployed around here. I think I want to get most of them along on the Franklin Road. So let's at least get them into Murphy's Bro. And here's Hooker. Hooker has arrived. That's pretty great. Let's see if that move it signal actually works. Uh, it often doesn't. Hey, there we go. Wait till they get on sort of orderly road on the road. There they go. Mostly just trying to guard against the possibility of trampling over each other on the roads, as is often what happens. Now that Hooker's arrived, I think my plan of attack here, and then I'll shut up again and get time going, is I'm going to bring Hooker down around here, and I'm going to bring the rest of Thomas's men at this intersection of Franklin Road and Gresham Lane. Hayes has arrived. Hayes is my little bitty, little bitty core. All right, I'm just gonna give the whole orders to the entire core to just come down this way. Why not? See what I can see about the enemy line to play some scout here. Um, anyway, so yeah, I want to get Hooker. I've already said that, so I'm just going to skip it.
All right, we're just about to start our assault. Uh, we've got all of our men in position here. We've got everyone that we've got. We've got Hooker's Corps, we've got the 19th Corps here, uh, and we've got the Army of Kentucky proper uh, up here ready to go. So I've moved my cavalry around. Eventually I'm going to take the victory point, but I'm afraid that if I do, because of the numerical advantage that I now have, almost two to one, uh, if I capture the victory point, they'll withdraw. And what I want to do is hurt them very badly. So I'm waiting for that. I want Tyler's division to engage first. Then I'm going to have Abercrombie's division come up across this open ground. And then I'm going to have the whole 19th Corps engage that way. Um, Hooker right now is a holding force. I'm putting Hooker's men here, hopefully, to pull attention uh, from the rebels over to this area. So that they stay in place and don't st start, you know, wheeling around and changing their facing. But I've also, as always, detached my artillery, and I'm going to set up basically a little artillery park. You know, nothing like a nothing like a huge battery by any means, but something. Um, who is under artillery fire here? Nobody's indicating that, but I, I imagine it's Hooker. Because I don't think any of my guns have the line of sight fire at the moment. All right, and it's almost nighttime. It's September. It's almost it's almost uh, 7 p.m. S whoops. Nope. That's not what I wanted at all. Just the first division, please. All right, first division, advance. Since enemy artillery loves skirmishes so much, I'm going to give them a lot. All right, they're just about in range. And right now I just want them to engage, so I'm gonna give them long range orders. Long range against cavalry, you know, works. Get them to head up and get this whole core to also head up. You a little closer. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna go nighttime pretty soon. Um, so I doubt I'll have an awful lot of time to to you know engage the the battle generally. And I wouldn't be surprised if the enemy withdraw at night. But for now, look at how coordinated and elegant this little move is. Routed at least, well, not routed quite yet. We're almost there. Here comes Abercrombie's men. The timing could not have been better, in my opinion, on that move. And we're going to try, like we tried last time, eventually, okay, change their formation to attack column. Um, and I'm going to give Churchill here spirited charge and see what that does. But I'm going to put these guys in attack column, and I'm actually going to send them as a column up against this line here. Uh, again, I I don't I haven't often used attack columns, so I'm mostly I'm trying this out for experimentation purposes. All right, make sure you advance, get in range. End of the day. Okay. I am honestly surprised. Uh, I thought the enemy would for sure withdraw. Now they they are probably they probably have changed position. I can't imagine they've changed position much, but I bet they've changed position. So let's find out. Nope. 
cool. Perfect. All right, I want the, uh... Of course, I want my 19th core here to engage before I send these attack columns in against the line. Because you never, even if you have attack column, even if attack column ends up working splendidly, um, you never want to send an assault force in without support. Um, even if that support's just skirmisher, like something. And this is true even of battles in the Civil War. Um, even Fredericksburg, you know, which is often sort of brought up as the the sort of quintessential uh, the, the quintessential example of outdated tactics in use on a modern battlefield. Um, the, the idea of Fredericksburg wasn't to put them spirited charge as well. We'll see how, how that assault goes first before I send these boys in in an assault column as well. But even Fredericksburg, right, which is, again, the prototypical example that people often bring up as sort of outdated tactics in use on a modern battlefield, was more subtle than it's often represented. The idea was not to hurl troops at Mary's Heights in order to take Mary's Heights. The idea was that the assault on Mary's Heights was a fixing force. It was a demonstration. Um, the idea was to convince the rebels that the real threat was the assault on Mary's Heights, while the rest of the army worked away at the at the flanks of the rebel position. Um, and it was the failure of these flank developments that led to the absolutely horrifying casualties of Fredericksburg. Not necessarily the, you know, the, the, the idiocy or the lack of, of intelligence with regard to the attack at Mary's Heights. Like, that, that, was, that was meant as a, de a demonstration, a distraction, a, a feint, essentially, to fix rebel attention in place. Uh, it just... Burnside genuinely didn't know what to do when the flank attacks sort of failed to have the effect that was planned. Um, and that's, and again, that's what led to the, to the mass casualties. It wasn't necessarily just like, like, oh, well, what do we do? I guess we better assault this, you know, extremely strong position across open ground with no preparation. It was, it was a bit subtler than that. Colonel Turkin was killed. Where's he? Hmm. 11th Ohio. Well, that's too bad. Well, I'm going to bring the 11th Ohio back, and I'm going to put the 3rd Tennessee in their place. Here comes our assault column. Boy, 17th Pennsylvania is taking a pounding. It's turning into a much bloodier battle than I expected. Of course, I, I guess, you know, to be fair, I did expect that the rebels would just withdraw before any meaningful contact was made, so... I guess anything other than that is uh, shockingly bloody in comparison. Okay, so... I don't know if this is... I think this is A-Bear. I think you pronounce this A-Bear. The, uh, the fact that A-Bear's men can take 850 casualties and just stand there and continue fighting is... I think it's a symptom of some of the other problems that exist in the game. You know, you... You've all heard me at this point complain quite often about the the airbending withdrawals, right? Like the, the troops that can just like zip across miles of the map without any problem. Um, 17th Pennsylvania broke? Okay. Um, and I think part of the reason that that's so annoying is that all of the enemy troops 
can withstand such a beating before they withdraw, right? Like, Hebert should be withdrawing well before he takes 950 casualties. And the fact that they don't means that, you know, when they break, they break in these weird spots and they kind of get in your way. And, you know, when they start withdrawing and breaking, they're... You know, they're broken and they should be chased down. And I think that, like, if if the game were a bit more... Alright, let's... Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm not expecting this to be super successful. But I do want to watch it happen. Um, anyway, so... I think that if the enemy were more willing to make... Sort of defensive movements. Like, you know, falling back... Um, rather than rather than just standing there and taking those hundreds of casualties and making those little little fallbacks and, and little withdrawals and little kind of tactical shifts um, it would actually help to kind of make the the battle a bit more dynamic um, and as a result oh, who broke forces brigade 1600 men great Churchill's doing good. Alright, you gotta get in there, man. There, go. Hey, look at that! The first use of an attack column. Pretty terrific success so far, I have to say. Okay, so they're broken now, as I sort of suspected they would. Uh, they took that cavalry charge. I mean, like, I'm gonna pause this. Look at the debuffs. In melee with enemy cavalry. Charged by determined foe. High casualties. Outflanked. Cohesion suffers. Under artillery fire. Let's look at the current morale. Zero percent. Um, charged by enemy cavalry close. Minus 50%. Casualties 36%. Artillery fire 3%. Charged by enemy 40%. Low cohesion 10%. Um, yeah, so even with that, that was... I still think that was a tremendous and effective charge and I'm definitely going to try to use that later um, but uh, even for all that they they did break pretty bad and I, I lost both of the attack columns now I don't think they should have broken in that you know like look at that how that's that's a bit annoying they lost 85 men and they had this just sort of string of debuffs nearby, but they shouldn't have broken. Uh, but I have to say, so that that dynamic though, the sort of the idea that you can get into this sort of melee and both units in the melee end up breaking and running is pretty historically uh, accurate. Like that that happens. You start reading about Civil War battles and bayonet charges and whatnot, like, what happens in these bayonet charges is sort of like wave, right? One side goes and displaces the other side, and there's a counter charge, and it displaces the attackers, and the attackers recharge and take the ground back, and, like, it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, quite a lot. And the fact that... I never... Okay. Apparently, you have to actually have the division commander hit hit um, rally in order for anything to happen. But the fact, so Churchill went, you know, he made this charge, inflicted a ton of casualties, broke and withdrew, and now he's recovering his morale. And the same thing's happening to 13th New York here. Again, is pretty, like, that. that sounds to me like a Civil War battle. That sounds like a very accurate depiction of things that happened historically when there were bayonet charges. And I like that. I think that that works and is pretty effective. Um, and we have now taken a major victory. 30% casualties. So, pretty cool. I will uh, I will definitely continue to try using these attack columns. I think it's a uh, I think it's pretty interesting. But let's uh, speed up as we're mopping up here.
Potatoes Battalion, Artillery Battalion whipped out. See what we can do against Klingman here. Oh no, I've got a minute. There's no way. <laughs> All right. That was a terrific battle. Glorious victory at Nashville. Pretty good battle. Um, all right, folks. I I think I'm going to call it here. Um, this is another sort of battle-heavy episode, but we've got a couple of things cooking. We've got our uh, river monitors that are being built here in Memphis. So I'm hoping to get them into action pretty soon. I'm hoping to use them to possibly help as we start moving way down here and coming into New Orleans. There are a lot of sort of riverside forts and various other things that I think we might be able to take. And capturing New Orleans, like, look at all this juicy, juicy stuff we got down here that we can take. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, and I will... Um, there are some movements developing over to the east that I want to get into that might have some influence on what's going on down here. Uh, but again, that is where I'm going to call it for now. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And uh, feel free to ask me some questions in the comments. And just let me know what you think. Otherwise, thank you very much once again for watching. And I'll see you next time.